Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Liberty Council files an amicus brief in support of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act in a case arising out of Massachusetts, and this now is at the Federal Court of Appeals, known as the First Circuit. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs and associate dean for the law school. Matt, this is a case where Liberty Council filed a brief arguing very simple proposition, but supporting it by a lot of evidence, that it's constitutional to define marriage as one man and one woman from the federal perspective for federal laws and federal purposes. This uh, this case is, is so very important. We are at a crossroads in our history here in the United States. We need to de- determine, uh, are, is marriage going to be what marriage has always been, the union of a man and a woman uh, for life before God and man and the central, the crux of of marriage, of course, having always been for the for uh, procreation for a child ring, or are we going to take a hammer to that uh, fundamental cornerstone institution and crush it and radically redefine marriage into oblivion? That's what those uh, who are uh, attacking the Defense of Marriage Act are trying to do. We uh, intend to stand firm and defend marriage. That's exactly right. Well, Massachusetts is the entity that brought this. The state of Massachusetts brought this, challenging the federal law. And, of course, in Massachusetts, that state has same-sex marriage by virtue of the court in a four-to-three decision. Not by the people, but by the court. Massachusetts argues that Congress, get this, has no authority to define marriage for purposes of programs including Medicare, Medicaid, and the cemetery grants program. Now, what they're essentially arguing is that in the state of Massachusetts, they have same-sex marriage. So therefore, if those people have the state rights to same-sex marriage, then they ought to be able to get spousal benefits like a married couple with respect to Medicare, Medicaid, and the cemetery grants program. Well, they're essentially saying the states have a right to tell the federal government whenever the federal government develops a plan, a program, or a benefit, that the states have a right to come into that state, to that federal plan, and say, actually, you should have defined it a little differently. (laughs) The definition of spouse, um, we ought to modify that to support this one state as opposed to the other 49 states. That makes no sense. Congress has the ability, just from a practical standpoint, putting same-sex marriage aside, Congress has the ability to define a program and to define the recipients of the program. For example, Congress could define a program that would help individuals who are single to buy houses, okay? Well, if Congress did that and they wanted to have that program to give some kind of federal benefit, a state couldn't come in and say, well, wait a minute, we need to have the cutoff line not at just uh, young people, but old people. We need to have it not just for single people, but for married people. That makes no sense that the state can come in and tell Congress what their recipient of the benefit ought to be. And that's what they're trying to do here. Well, when the Defense of Marriage Act is as solid as it is and as unassailable essentially as it is and as as constitutionally rooted as it is, they're going to have to uh, attack it from uh, all possible angles. This is a Hail Mary pass. I well, mean, I think they probably know this is going to fail, but they're but they're throwing this Hail Mary pass because really uh, there aren't uh, that many kinks in the armor, if you will. They don't have much other uh, choice. Well, yeah, take this, for example. Medicare, you have to be a certain age, for example, to get Medicare. And Congress defines that by federal law because it's a federal benefit. And then they also subsidize the states on some of that. Well, if a state came in and said, yeah. we don't want the age to be 62, we want... to be 35. We ought to have 35. Yeah. Uh, in our state, we say people ought to be entitled to Medicare at 35. Oh, the federal government says, okay, well, that's what you want to do in your state, fine. 35 for Massachusetts, 65 for Florida. 
Um, that makes no sense. How about sense. Social Security? Uh, Say, they, you know, the state says, well, you know, I know other states, people don't start receiving their Social Security checks until, what, 65? That's right. Or, yeah, uh, 60, 62, 65. Yeah, uh, well, in our state, we think, we, you know, we, we'd like to really spur on the economy. We think we should start getting Social Security at 30. Well, right. it, it doesn't so, work that way. No, and so that's what they're doing. They're saying, yeah. well, in our state, we have same-sex marriage. Federal government says we're not going to get Medicare and Medicaid to... Uh, spouses of people if they're not married. Um, and they're saying, no, 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 you got to do it to us. So they're saying that the state law is supreme over the federal law and ought to define what the federal law and benefits are. And it's always been to the contrary. That's a novel idea. It would overturn years of precedent on issues where state versus federal laws clash. And the federal law is always considered to be the prevailing law over the states. It, it is a radical departure of precedent. It's illogical. But this is what they're trying to do. If they succeed, what it does is it torpedoes the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. And that means that the federal government can't define marriage as one man. Well, one that's woman. the goal here. Let's put, you know brush aside all of the 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 chaff here, the the confusing, the complicated. What the narrow narrow in and focus like a laser. What they're looking to do here is say that in our state we have created this new definition of marriage that somehow says that a man can marry a man or a woman can marry a woman. Something that is that is absurd and oxymoronic throughout history, and is something that is very novel and. Only only recently has the the term same sex marriage in recent years even entered into modern lexicon. Well, they're saying, well, since we have n made up this new notion of counterfeit marriage, now the entire uh, uh, federal government has to recognize yeah. our new radical redefinition of marriage of this counterfeit marriage, and that just it's never happened before. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. That's now. exactly what they're trying to do. It's mm -hmm. absurd to suggest that Massachusetts can force its distortion definition of marriage that's inconsistent with common sense, contrary to history, and a novel idea on the federal government, and then force the federal government and all the other 49 states to fall in line, lockstep with Massachusetts. But that's exactly what they're doing. That's why this case is so important. If they torpedo the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, then the House of Cards starts to come down because then the federal government can't define it. Well, what about the states? Take Virginia, for example. Yeah. I mean, Virginia has probably the strongest single state constitutional amendment protecting uh, marriage, a natural marriage, as between a man and a woman. Uh, if Massachusetts were to prevail in this case, uh, that would wipe away, uh, ultimately that could wipe away Virginia and, and the other 31 states, I believe, that currently have constitutional amendments uh, protecting the Yeah, because you'd be marriage. using the, the United States Constitution in the Massachusetts case to say that the federal law defining marriage as one man and one woman is contrary to the United States mm -hmm. Constitution. Well, if the federal law is contrary, then the definition of marriage in the other states are also contrary, contrary to, the federal, to the, federal the federal Constitution. And Constitution. under the Supremacy Clause, that means that the uh, states must comply with the what is federal, uh, federally constitutional. And that's the end game here. That's the goal. That's the goal. And, and then at that point in time, if you redefine marriage to something that it's not and something that it's naturally cannot be, uh, you ultimately say that moms and dads are irrelevant mm -hmm. to children, that children, boys, don't need fathers, and they don't need moms. You're setting a society that says it's okay to be fatherless. It's okay to have a motherless society. And not only is it okay to be fatherless, but it's okay to skew the view of the absent gender in a negative way to put a negative spin on the absent gender, not only to eliminate it, but to negativize it. Uh, and that has consequences to children. And it has consequences in every conceivable, measurable category, from education to juvenile crime to mental and uh, physical health uh, to uh, lasting relationships, and it just goes on down the line. And and that is uh, settled science. I mean, that, that's just fact. And, um, you know, this is a full frontal assault on God's design for marriage and family. This is a this is rebellion against God, rebellion against uh, natural law, and uh, we see it playing out in the courts. Go to Liberty Council's website uh, to learn more about this case and others, and our activity in defending natural marriage as the union of one man and one woman. You can go to lc.org, ask for my book, Same Sex Marriage, Putting Every Household at Risk. For a contribution, we'll send that to you right away. That's Same Sex Marriage, Putting Every Household at Risk. 
or you can call 1-800-671-1776. This issue of marriage and defending natural marriage and families as the union of one man and one woman is the critical battleground of our generation. There's no question about it, because if that topples, that's the first form of government. Everything else becomes destabilized. It's like the foundation. If the foundation is shattered, then the house on which it's built just simply falls apart. And this is the foundation on which our society, our government is based. That's why it's so important to defend natural marriage. Go to lc.org, ask for same-sex marriage, putting every household at risk, or call us at 1-800-671-1776. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.